Welcome back. Max Olson of The Athletic. Well known before he came on our show as a controversial firebrand newspaperman. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he did write a column this week on uh, Deion Sanders and the portal and all of that and talk to the players. Max, uh, I told you in text yesterday, I read the thing three times. It was so good and so in-depth and like must have taken you a very long time to do and, and work through quotes and all of that. Are you surprised at the backlash that it got from Boulder, Colorado? Yeah, Paul, appreciate you having me on as always. Um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely surprising. I mean, it's that man that 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 all really escalated quickly. Um, <laughs> I've definitely been staying away from Twitter the past couple of days. And you look, you know, the Athletic is a subscription website. Obviously, there's a, you know, you gotta you gotta pay to read the piece. There's a barrier to entry there. So I, I've been doing this long enough that I understand nowadays. Like sometimes the people who are the most mad. Uh, about these things are people who haven't read the article, you know, and I, and I hope that, that people do. I hope that people read it and, uh, you know, understand what the, the story is actually about, because I think all of the, uh, you know, subsequent uh, fighting that's gone on on Twitter uh, is not really what the story is about. I, 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 I tried to really handle that with, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of care and, uh, and fairness and, and trying to write about these guys who, you know, this is, this is not some sort of like investigative hit piece on Colorado and its culture or anything like that. This is about, you know, 53 guys who went through something pretty unprecedented in terms of the, the roster flip last off season. And I've just kind of kept an eye on them over the last year. Was very curious to see since I covered the transfer portal, um, you know, where, where did they end up? You know, are they playing? Are they starting? Are they, are they, is it going well? And uh, so, yeah, past couple of months have been, been connecting with them. And, uh, you know, honestly, Paul, I was, I was so impressed by their maturity and their perspective um, in terms of looking back on the past 12 months and kind of the roller coaster ride that each of them went on. And, uh, you know, I really found that uh, enough time has passed that, you know, the bitterness and the hurt kind of wears off. And, and you know, these guys truly, um, they don't hate Colorado. They don't hate Deion Sanders. They're, they're still watching Colorado with fascination like everybody else. And, um, you know, I think that the story is really about them and uh, just kind of trying to humanize them and, and the experience they went through. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly been surprising to see kind of what this has turned into. Max, when you look at also, like, the, the kind of whole story at Colorado, like, we're in the – like, this is – it's like they're trying to, to – cure a disease or something like we're at, like he's in the testing phase of can I build a team 80 to 90 percent out of the portal year over year and win conference titles and get in the playoff we don't really know that yet because he's only done it one year and they were four and eight in his first year so there's like a lot of results that have yet to be seen he clearly believes in it but it's still the amount, it's not that he's using the portal almost exclusively. It's the amount of churn that that roster has that's going to make it hard for anybody to really build chemistry there. Yeah, and, and that's that's why I've been so interested in Colorado over the past 12 months. It's because I've, I cover, I've been covering the portal since it started, and this is absolutely like the most ambitious experiment in terms of, of roster building that we've seen with the transfer portal. Um, to have 53 guys leave in one offseason to cut 20 guys in, in, after the spring game. Like, we haven't seen anybody do that before or since, right? And so you, you're just – I think everybody around the country is, is very curious. Like, can you get the right players in there that that pays off? Like, can, can he um, – can Deion Sanders and, and his coaching staff um, figure out a way to really kind of hack this thing and, um, you know, have, have – take a program from one and 11 to playing for a conference title in, in two years. I mean, it's just, if they pull it off, um, you know, it, it'd be pretty incredible to see. So, um, and, and you know what I, in covering the spring portal and stuff, like I think Colorado's gotten better. Like I think Colorado is definitely a bowl team. And I think Colorado, um, you know, has a chance to be much, much improved in 2024. And so, um, but you know, it's been another off season. Yeah. Of, of 30 guys going out, 30 new guys coming in from the portal. And, uh, you know, can they get, I think they're going to have better competitive depth this fall. Obviously the big 12 is going to present some different challenges for them. Um, but they'll also present some different challenges for the big 12. Max, there's been some cherry picking of, of particular quotes, you know, to tr kind of drum up one side's argument of, of the piece and all of that. And, and like you said, people need to read it. And if they did, there'd be a lot less noise out there. Um, but I know that's, that's asking a lot in some cases. So when you talk to, 
uh, these guys. I mean, there's obviously uh, some that felt like it could have been handled a bit better and that they felt kind of just tossed to the side or, or not very respected in some cases. But um, from just kind of gathering all the information together, I mean, is this just kind of business in college football these days transaction-wise, or should we expect there to be more of a, of a you know, uh, I, I guess on the part of, of Dion or his coaching staff, some emotional uh, support for, for guys. I mean, this is a business after all. So what can kind of be expected when you're undergoing roster transition like this, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, Dion Sanders was, was uh, to his credit, he, he was very clear with his message from day one. And I think that's why all of them like have very strong memories of that first team meeting because he did um, make it very clear what he was coming in and, and planning to do. And, uh, you know, as Chase Sowell, the, the wide receiver who went to ECU, said to me, like, he didn't think Dion was being a dick. He just thought that he was saying, you know, prove to me that you can play. And so um, I think for those guys that went through that spring experience, obviously they figured out pretty quickly, like, okay, you know, the, the, the Shadur and Travis Hunter and these guys from the portal are kind of the stars of the show here. And um, it's, it's an uphill thing to prove that we deserve to be here. Um, and, and, look, I think that um, it's, it's clear – and this was what Deion Sanders told them um, when it was time to, to cut some of these guys loose is, you know, I think he wanted to move on from guys he felt like could not help them in 2023. And he felt that he could get more, you know, better, more experienced players uh, out of the transfer portal to, to fill out that roster and, and really uh, try to kind of remove a lot of the guys that, um, you know, he felt like were responsible for a one in 11 season. So, um, you know, talking to those, those players, um, some of them were not, surprised that they ended up getting cut they could kind of tell as they were going through spring ball you know they weren't getting a lot of first team reps or anything like that um and i think that they understand you know these are you gotta remember um these are these are kids that are you know 18 to, to 22 23 years old a couple of them i talked to were were you know coming out of their freshman year and had only been at colorado for a season at that point in time and i think they certainly understand like this is a business and, and it's a lot more transactional now and um you know you got to prove that that uh, you deserve to be there because uh, there, there are a lot of replacements out there in the portal who can uh, uh, come in and contribute. Max, uh, in the portal uh, right now, I mean, it hasn't been as huge or maybe earth-shattering as people thought, but there's a lot of interesting things going on. Uh, Dominic Williams uh, from TCU uh, is nearing a decision. What do you know about uh, how uh, the timetable for that? Uh, great question. Yeah, it, I mean, it's supposed to be today i don't think we've got a clear time on when that's supposed to be um it, it does seem like this is uh certainly coming down to the wire in terms of a battle between oklahoma texas lsu missouri's in the mix as well um you know i think that uh you, you look at each of those situations and and he certainly would provide a ton of value uh, to those teams i mean oklahoma i think people assume oklahoma is the front runner i guess we'll see um, and Oklahoma, you know, Brent Venables came out and said after the spring game, they've got a big need at defensive tackle because um, they they don't they only have one one player on their team that has any starting experience at that position after uh, Jacob Lissy had to medically retire. So um, I think that would be a really impactful piece for Oklahoma uh, to pair him with Ethan Downs and who they have coming in and coming back on the defensive line. Certainly Texas is trying to replace Byron Murphy and, and Tavondre Sweat, and LSU is trying to replace the three NFL draft picks at defensive tackle as well. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough decision, for, I think, for Dominic in terms of uh, what's the place that, where you're going to shine the most. I don't know what the percentages are on guys entering the portal and then deciding to stay where they are. I know it's not, uh, it's, it's not the, the highest percentage, that's for sure, but it does happen from time to I, I time. I can tell you it's less than like 2%. Okay, it's a pretty so small number. Yeah, very yeah. rarely does it happen, but it does happen, and it happened in a big way for Arizona, Max, with Takario Davis, uh, the big-time corner, deciding that he was going to withdraw from the portal and uh, go play for Brent Brennan and, um, and Dwayne Aquina and uh, – you know, Fafita and uh, McMillan and, and all those guys. Um, how yeah. huge was this for Arizona in your mind? Because it seemed like a pretty big deal to me. Yeah, you know, certainly after Damian Martinez, uh, the Oregon State uh, all pac 12 running back, after he committed to Miami, then then I bumped Takara Davis up to number one in terms of our best available rankings. Um, and I, I think that a lot of uh, – it, just a really interesting situation of, of a player who went in the portal after their coaching change but never moved, never, never left the program and uh, stayed, wanted to give Brent Brennan and his – and Dwayne Keenan and his coaching staff a chance. And, uh, you know, clearly they made a good enough impression on him that uh, he officially took his name out. And, uh, yeah, he, he certainly kept his options open, and I'm sure there are a lot of schools that would have liked to pick him up. Um, and there are a few that definitely had needs at, at cornerback. But, yeah, this is a, a big 6'4", long corner 
um, who, you know, was one of the best in the Pac-12 last year in terms of, uh, of pass breakups as a starter. And, uh, you know, I think has got a ton of potential there. So uh, great heat for Arizona and uh, one that they really kind of had to manage that one day to day. And uh, clearly I think he, he must have uh, liked what he saw in terms of this new regime. Max, um, Penny Boone committed to UCF, ending a, a long journey through the transfer portal this offseason. Uh, but uh, outside of him, uh, what do you think of what they've done, uh, kind of improving that roster for year two of the Big 12? Yeah, I, I think it's been impressive, the high school recruiting and the uh, and the portal recruiting, too. Um, I think UCF is one of those programs that, you, you know, everybody kind of talks about you know, Ole Miss and Florida State and USC and kind of all these, you know, Colorado, all these schools that are competing for the, the crown here. But there's definitely like a – there's another tier of programs um, that really can benefit from the transfer portal from, from getting guys that uh, – maybe you're bringing in guys that were previously like highly rated recruits and they want more playing time like we saw. You know, Javon Baker really blew up when he went from Alabama to UCF. Um, you know, I, I think that that's one of those programs that uh, because it's a desirable destination to live, um, and it's a good coaching staff, and it's a Power Five program. Now and you got some stability with Gus Malzahn. Like, you can definitely see why it's an attractive spot uh, for for guys who are in the portal. And uh, you know, I, I think that the investment they've made in, in transitioning into the Big Twelve, uh, I, I think, is going to pay off for them. I, you know, there's so man, there's so many programs that you know you think are going to be better this season. So um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But like, I, I think KJ Jefferson was a pretty good pickup in terms of a veteran out of the portal and. Uh, you know, UCF is uh, is going to have some playmakers. We saw it when they upset Oklahoma State last year. Like um, they can, they're going to over time here. They are going to be more and more ready to kind of play with the big boys in the conference. Yeah, they got to. I mean, not at Jefferson now. They got Curry Brown as well. I mean, they, I mean, there's like 20 guys, but yeah, I mean, they they got a really impressive list that's uh, been building yep. up. Um, Max, I saw where you were at the Nebraska spring game. Uh, are the Huskers back? Are they are they are they in the the playoff next year? Uh, based on what you saw in in Lincoln last Saturday. Uh, it's a little too early to say on the playoff. Um, I will say there was a passing offense, and that was a that was a big improvement from uh, from the struggles of, of year one under Matt Rule. Um, you know, I thought that uh, certainly you had to like what you saw from Dylan Raiola. He can definitely um, sling it around, and uh, you know, I think that he's going to have to continue to earn it. But I think it'd be surprising if he's not the starter this fall. And uh, you know, there'll be some growing pains with that, but. You know, certainly they have uh, they've improved their team as well. I think Isaiah Nayer coming over from Texas was a really nice addition if he love can stay healthy. Up. Yeah, love that. Pick yeah, up. I, I think that's a great move for him uh, as a guy that just you know got behind a bunch of studs at Texas. Um, if he can stay healthy, I think that he's got a chance to to really flash. They've had they've had good pickups and they've had good retention there too. They just have not had a lot of guys leave that program for the portal. So um, you know, I think people are definitely expecting uh, you know significant improvement, especially offensively. All right, Max, last thing before we let you go. Zachary Franklin, uh, transferring from Ole Miss last year. Everybody wanted him, uh, yep. you know, after UTSA. It did not work out, injuries and whatnot at uh, at Ole Miss. What do you know about the buzz around him? Yeah, I think at this time last year, I think I had him ranked right there with Keon Coleman in terms of, like, the, the top guys in the in the spring portal. And, uh, you know, there was definitely a lot of schools fighting over Zachary Franklin and, um, you know, got got banged up there. And, and that's the thing that's tough. Um, sometimes when these guys transfer, it doesn't necessarily mean that they picked a bad school for them or something like that. It's, it's you know, if you have a little setback in fall camp or something like that and you're playing with talented guys, um, you know, they're going to surpass you. And it's going to be tough to get back out there. We saw that with, uh, you know, Jalen Robinson going to Ole Miss as well. So, um, yeah, I, I think Zachary Franklin, uh, you know, I was a little surprised because sometimes with those guys, you're like, I just assumed that they went through pro day and they, you know, didn't get drafted or whatever. So, I'm a little surprised to see his name in the portal. And uh, I, I don't know if UTSA is, is looking to bring him back. I, I don't know the status on that. Based but, on what we um, know, that's a no. <laughs> so I think it's – but I think he'll still have options. I mean, he, he you know, he was – he broke all the school records in terms of receiving. Like, he's a very productive uh, player who um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, feels like he's got a lot to prove right now. Max Olsen of The Athletic. Max, I cannot wait for your next controversial article. Hey, no, in all seriousness, that was, was a great so piece, man. And uh, don't let the cult yeah, of personality thanks, bother you at all. I thought it was really well done and very fair as well. And so, uh, yeah, man, keep up the good work. You, you guys were not going to get me to say any viral bullshit today, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, good stuff. I appreciate you guys. Right, Thank you, man. Max Olson of The Athletic with us here.